Hello everyone, uh, my name is Mohamed Haji Smiley, and I am a research faculty with the College of Information and Computer Sciences at UMass Amherst. I'm going to talk about uh, a quick overview of uh, our research at UMass and uh, so the topic of uh, my talk is on carbon intelligent distributed systems where we are using a robust and data-driven approach to tackle those problems. So uh, let me begin with a quick motivation. So uh, perhaps uh, most of you have seen this uh, recent nice plot that uh, talks about the compute, infra uh, compute infrastructure needed for doing state-of-the-art uh, AI models. Uh, and the nice observation here is that the compute uh, infrastructure like CPU and memory needed for uh, doing state-of-the-art AI models has been doubled every 3.4 months from 2012 to 2018, which shows a huge uh, exponential increase of around 300,000 from 2012 to 2018. Just to imagine how big is this number, uh, you can see that with, with the same uh, interval, Moore's law implies an increase of just seven uh, times as compared to this 300,000th time. So uh, this has apparently a lot of consequences in affordability uh, and a lot of issues, but one of the most important and foundational consequences is the energy usage of this compute infrastructure needed to run those AI models. Uh, that could be translated into huge increase in the carbon footprint of uh, AI models. So that's one example. The other example is this uh, recent um, uh, popularity of Bit uh, Bitcoin that has, again, some sort of consequences in the uh, foundational energy requirement to um, mine Bitcoins. And so recent articles shows that, for example, uh, this article shows that like uh, Bitcoin currently is consuming more electricity than the entire uh, Argentina. And this number is going to increase again uh, at, at some sort of exponential growth. And uh, there are some articles recently published like in Nature that uh, uh, forecast the total energy demand of ICT domain by 2030. And it shows that, okay, so the expected energy demand of uh, the entire uh, ICT sector will be around 21% of the entire uh, electricity needed for the entire planet and, uh, on average case. And even with the best uh, kind of prediction, ICT energy demand goes to around 8% of total uh, energy demand of the entire world, which is still a substantial amount of energy. And so um, towards kind of in tackling these issues, there are definitely a lot of effort on uh, developing research and at the intersection of sustainability and AI at a lot of different levels. Like for example, in the core uh, AI models, there are a lot of efforts to develop some sort of green uh, AI or green ML models that you can see a, a few examples here, like for green AI, or there is a recent article in our uh, actually uh, college that shows that, okay, so training a single AI model can emit as much uh, carbon as five cars in their lifetime. And so deep learning has a terrible carbon footprint. So this is some sort of like um, efforts in for the developing core uh, sustainable AI models, but uh, you can see a lot of additional efforts in the entire spectrum of uh, digital infrastructure to make the entire um, ecosystem to be more sustainable, like some efforts talking about energy efficient device placement of neural networks or energy efficient scheduling of AI workload, or like something uh, on the facility level uh, that for example, a recent uh, article by DeepMind uh, is uh, proposing some sort of deep learning models to uh, uh, reduce the cooling um, um, bill of data centers by, by around 40%. And so these are all efforts. And 
what uh, we do actually is kind of in the last mile of this ecosystem where our goal is to develop some um, foundational uh, theories and uh, machine learning tools for carbon intelligent data centers that this research actually is supported by a Google faculty research award and a recent NSF um, career award in 2021. And so the motivation here is that, okay, so a lot of companies, uh, they follow this ambitious goal that they say, okay, so the internet is a 24 uh, seven service and it could be or it should be a uh, 24 carbon free service as well and so towards this ambitious goal in 2020 a lot of these companies like microsoft claim to be uh, carbon negative by 2030 apple commits to be 100 percent carbon neutral in uh, 2030 uh, actually google announced that right now even these days their data centers are working harder when uh, the, renew the renewable is plentiful. And here you can see the Amazon's commitment to be uh, carbon uh, zero by 2040. And so uh, there are a lot of efforts in this domain. And so uh, right now I'd like to just dive into one technical topic uh, that actually is uh, something that we are doing here and show how these are uh, nice, interesting research problems and uh, we are developing how we are developing some sort of uh, uh, AI and machine learning models to develop these sort of problems. Okay, so the problem that we are going to talk about is uh, um, supported by a Google uh, award and NSF uh, grants. So uh, the topic is on data center energy optimization and the very, very basic scenario that we are going to talk about is like this, that you do have some energy load from data center that uh, it could be divided into elastic and in elastic loads uh, that by elastic, I mean, it could be kind of, um, is kind of time shiftable over time, but in elastic, some sort of immediate load that should be uh, executed immediately. But anyway, this load could be um, satisfied from a portfolio of energy sources, like from the electric grid, from the local uh, on-site renewable sources, or from large-scale on-site renewable, uh, on-site energy storage systems. And the question is that, okay, so what is the right energy flow among these different sources such that by the end of the day, you can satisfy the energy demand of your facility and at the same time, maximize the, the usage of clean energy or green energy and minimize the cost of using energy from electric grid. Okay, so that's the question that we are trying to answer here. And why this question is a challenging question uh, here, you can see that the challenge really is coming uh, from the uncertainty and everything almost in this scenario is kind of uncertain because Okay, so you can see the uh, energy demand of uh, the data center is changing over time. And once it's included uh, or integrated with the renewable sources like wind, it becomes even more unpredictable. That's one part that is uh, an uncertainty in the problem. The other uh, domain of uncertainty is about the price of energy, which is again, kind of unpredictable because it follows some sort of um, energy market uh, rules. And so in this problem, we are kind of dealing with a scenario that is really a multidimensional uncertainty and how we tackle this problem. So we kind of uh, have two approach. One of them is a little bit more theoretical approach that we just write down this as an optimization problem. But this optimization problem looks very simple and straightforward. But what makes this problem to be challenging is that really we don't know the input to this uh, optimization problem and we are going to develop some sort of uh, foundational theories to show that okay so if we don't know what's going to happen in the future in this sort of online decision making scenario or online optimization scenario how we can make sure that the, the algorithms that we are developing are um, provably efficient against those uncertainties and so we developed some sort of nice uh, theoretical algorithms with nice bounds and, and theories behind them. And we have shown that, okay, so our algorithms are 
best that you can do without knowing anything uh, in the future. However, um, this uh, like preliminary uh, sort of experimental results shows that, okay, so even though these are the best possible things in theory, but uh, since we don't know, we don't have any assumption about the uncertainty of the model, uh, they still uh, are not so good. There is a gap between what the algorithm does and what is the, the best possible uh, optimal solution. And so what we are proposing here is just to fill this gap with developing some sort of nice uh, state-of-the-art ML uh, frameworks to further improve these algorithms using uh, data-driven approaches. Okay, so that was like a quick overview of uh, one of our projects in this domain. We do have a lot of other uh, projects in this domain at the intersection of both um, foundational theoretical problems and also some nice uh, kind of application domain scenarios. Uh, and most of them are kind of involved in both theory and applications. And if you are interested more on uh, our projects, um, uh, feel free to visit our uh, homepage at UMass. And so there are a lot of other projects there that are uh, all, almost all of them are in this like domain of uh, sustainability and uh, AI. And so let me just uh, wrap up and conclude my talk uh, by a quote by Bill Gates in his uh, letter to the class of 2017 that somewhere in the middle he says that, okay, so if I were out, starting out today, looking for the same kind of opportunity to make a big impact in the world, I would consider three fields. One of them is artificial intelligence. The second is energy, because making it clean, affordable, and reliable would be essential for fighting poverty and climate change. And the third one is bioscience. So what we are doing is a research at the, at the intersection of AI and energy. And, and thank you for your listening. <laughs>